Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our hustings for our local candidates, for our local ward, Milton Ward. Uh, just to say to you, uh, my, own, my name is Stephen Bazet. I'm not standing. I'm the, I'm the rector of the parish of South End, in which uh, the Milton Community Partnership is uh, situated here. Um, and I would wish to thank the MCP for, invite, for putting this on and for inviting me to chair the hustings. Um, the MCP is, um, uh, produces terrific work in our part of South End, and that's known, it's acknowledged by South End Council for the work that it's done. And to my reckoning, it's 15 years this year, Matt, isn't it, that it's been, it's been operating. Okay, to great acclaim that's been happening. Now, what we're going to do this evening is that I'm going to ask the candidates to, in, in up to four minutes each, to explain why they're standing and to make their pitch. And I'm going to do that first of all in alphabetical order. We'll then open, throw this to the floor uh, with questions. And I think what, at the end of the proceedings, when we'll just ask each candidate to wind, wind up um, uh, their, their, their pitch. OK, so, Tammy, you come first in there. Um, <laughs> On the new I'm sorry, Tan. <laughs> if, if you could speak up to four minutes, then just, just speak about why you're standing. So. Hi, good evening, everybody. Well, I'm completely new to this, and I have chosen to be a candidate for the independents. I've chosen to be a candidate for the independents, and my reason being is because I've lived in South End all my life, and I think it's about time that the people of South End Borough, and obviously I'm standing for Milton, so the residents of Milton have a voice to go to. I've had a walk round some of the areas in Milton Ward. Um, I can see, obviously, there's paving problems, road problems, um, rubbish problems. So already, without speaking directly to the residents, that's what I've picked up on so far. What I would like people to do is, if they've got faith in me, come to me and I will do whatever I can to make sure issues are resolved for the people in Milton. Um, previously worked within the benefit sector, I've got 11 years, so I've obviously got knowledge of how benefits work and I know the difficulties people have dealing with job centres, contact centres, and hopefully my experience working with them will help people that are going through difficulty. I'm a family lady, I've got two small children, I want safe streets, I want good communities, and I hope with the right people and the right support, we can get there. Okay. Tammy, yes, no, fine, fine. Tammy, you're going to have to... You're going to have to fulfill your form bidders, that's it. OK. But some people are loquacious, and you have to, you have to stop them. Right, Jonathan, you come next in the, in the uh, order of the... Uh, alphabetical order. So, John, you can put your pitch. Please. Okay, thank you. Well, obviously, sorry is different for me. I have been Milton councillor um, for a few years um, now, actually first elected back in um, 2000. So, obviously, but I would really say I have very much got the passion as much now as when I was elected in 2000 to continue improvements for Milton Ward. There really is a lot to be proud of within the ward. Yes, there's day-to-day -day issues that um, we get, and of course all councillors in Milton Ward will have to deal with the day-to-day uh, the -day concerns that come forward. But, you know, really for a moment, sort of look at what has been achieved, you know, in the town, in Milton Ward over the years. The funding, certainly when the Conservative administration was in, you know, what had been achieved over that time. You look at the projects around the town, if we look at sort of City Beach that came in you know, the last uh, few years, the projects, roads and public rail, if you look at areas sort of off the high street, for example, Clifftown Road, areas around the new college and university which we're extremely proud of, you know, really to improve that area, that part of Milton, that, that part of the town centre. There's other issues, of course, across, um, across the town. Many people sort of praise the work of the airport, for example, the work around that, the employment that has been offered because of that and the, the business part that will be coming forward, um, the, the JAP, the, uh, the Area Action Plan. So it's all important. It helps employment, which is just so important. Because certainly in Milton Ward, um, it is and has been for a while, you know, on the high sort of end of, of the unemployment um, level. Obviously, that, that sort of touching a little bit and much more will, of course, come out in, the, in questions, but that, that covers sort of, sort of the sort of big projects, the goals, you know, to get the funding 
the schemes in the town. But look at it, you know, on a more localised level, and the issues that Breton's come about, you know, rubbish and fly tipping. I mean, I will take up more than my sort of four minutes, and maybe uh, questions on that. You know, the different schemes that has been done over the time over the Conservative administration, you know, to try and improve that. Watching out, obviously, the change of contract, moving away from Corey that we're going to be doing, and. Uh, you know, to making sure that uh, any new sort of uh, company tendered um, does, you know, a good job in helping with those issues. And um, parking issues, all right, for time, and um, parking issues across the town, we're looking into that. So, okay, I'll, I'll stop there. But as much passion now as when I was first elected to be, to continue to be your councillor. Thank, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, we move to Ro Robert. You're on, you're next, Robert. Oh, so if you can... Do you mind if I stand? And... Yes, Robert. I don't want to get clients. <laughs> uh, church just, uh, seats, you know. <laughs> uh, my back. I made a few notes somewhere and I can't find them. There we are. Um, yes, I'm Bob Howes, um, standing for the Liberal Democrats. I'm a proud Liberal Democrat, keen and proud European. I've regarded myself as a European since the mid-70s. Um, really, my father started his first business in this ward, um, just off the high street when he was about 17, I think. Um, he was a commercial artist. So my links are quite deep. I, I've never lived here. I've lived in Victoria. I'm now in Westborough, so I, I'm quite close to Milton. Um, the thing I would say about the ward is that it's very lucky in some ways because you've got access to transport is quite good. Uh, I mean, three railway stations, you, you know, within walking distance of here, probably. Um, and the buses... Uh, I don't like the bus transport we have in South End, but you do have on the A13 probably the best uh, sort of frequency of buses. Uh, I noticed that on the 2011 census, Milton Ward had about 44% of the people with no car or van. A very high percentage of people who actually relied on, you know, what what we jokingly call public transport. I mean, our transport at South End is nearly, well, it's all private. Trains and the buses are private. Uh, but politicians and local government officers and journalists persist in calling it public transport. Um, the other thing I would say, Clement Freud, um, when he was uh, writing a column in the Times, I remember uh, 20 years ago now, he, uh, he was sent down by the Times to South End and he covered a football match. South End United game. And he wrote this column about South End and he described it as a down market seaside resort. And I've always thought that South End Council has had a problem since about 1960 because it could never decide whether it was a seaside resort or whether it was going to be a big commercial centre with huge buildings with, full of computers. You know. um, and and I, I think that for some years it's been schizophrenic in that way. And, it's, and, and I think it's held back the council in some ways. Um, uh, you've got major problems in the ward. Um, and I mean, refuse is just appalling. Um, people put it on the pavement, on the highway. The, the council advises you not to do that. They say put it on your own property. You look down Princess Street on a Wednesday morning and it looks like a municipal slum. You know, terrible. Black, pink, black, pink, bags, both sides. It's terrible. And I would, if elected, put pressure on the council in some way to see how we could encourage people to put <coughs> refuse on their own, I don't know, garden fence, garden wall, whatever. Um, but I've no doubt that a lot of the local issues will come up in questions. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Vida, you have up to four minutes. Okay. Um, my name is Vida Mansfield. I'm standing for the Green Party. I'm, again, I have never done anything like this before. I asked to be put forward to stand in Milton. I'm passionate about green policies and I'm equally passionate about Milton Ward. And I was really pleased when I was selected by the Green Party. Um, I lived in Milton Ward when I was younger. Um, we lived above my dad's shop in uh, St Helens Road. And I went to Barron's Court Infant School, as it was then. And I had family living here until I was in my teens. I now work in Milton Ward. I work in a children's bookshop on Hamlet Court Road. So I spend a lot of my time in the ward. I try and do almost all of my shopping in Milton Ward. I try and support the independent shops, but I also know it's very important to the ward. 
but the bigger shops are also employing people. Um, so I try to support them as much as possible. Um, I have a lot of friends here. I spend, I have a lot of social time. Uh, I attend Melton Community Partnership. I have a young daughter, and we come to a lot of family activities they do here, and it's wonderful. And I think they need a lot of support here and a lot of thanks for what they do for the community. There are a lot of issues in Milton Ward. Uh, dog mess has been brought up. Um, it's, a, it's a borough wide thing, I think. And what doesn't help is when you, know, you approach. I approached Corey in the past about dog bins and was told that they automatically declined any um, request for more dog waste bins as a matter of course, and that there was no point trying to get any more in because they wouldn't put them in automatically. You would have to really fight for them, which I find is a pretty disgusting thing. Um, so I think that's definitely something, which is why there are so few in a lot of the wards. Um, and presumably why there are also so few bins, which doesn't help with the litter problem. Going on with the rubbish, um, not everyone has a front property that they can put their rubbish on. I think that's especially if you live in a house of multiple occupation, occupation particularly, or if any building that's been converted, there are some very small front properties. Definitely needs looking at. I was talking to a lady the other day who was quite upset because she's in a mobility scooter and if people put their rubbish out on the wrong day, she simply can't get down the street. There's some very narrow pavements. Um, so these are all issues that have to be discussed. Public transport. Um, I have to disagree that the buses are good in Milton Ward. I think they're pretty appalling. They only go along um, the London Road. You can't get down Hamlet Court Road by bus any time. There are lots of people that rely on buses. There are people that live in the old people's home at the bottom of, or not old people's home, the residential unit at the bottom of Hamlet Court Road that have to get a taxi to the top of Hamlet Court Road so that they can use their bus passes to travel anywhere, which I'm, I think is pretty disgusting. And the traders in Hamlet Court Road noticed that when a bus was temporarily diverted down Hamlet Court Road some time ago, the trade picked up in Hamlet Court Road. So it shows you when you provide a good public transport system in an area, it can also help business. Um, development of the cliffs is another big thing for the Green Party. As a party, I think we're probably the only ones I would come out and say we're against any development overdevelopment on the cliffs. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful landmark. It's one of the great things that people love about South End, walking along the cliffs with their families. And I don't think we should be looking at building any more on there. I think we should try and preserve what we have. Um, another big issue which is borough wide is school places. Huge issue, particularly in Milton Ward. There is one school with one class per year. They can't expand anymore. Barons Court is a fantastic school, but they can't um, achieve any more than they're doing at the moment and unfortunately because of gov current government policy we can't build anymore so the council needs to come up with some really creative ideas around that and not just try and fit in an extra class here and there in the Peter, can you draw to a close? Yep, I would just like to say that I do think Milton is a fantastic world and I'm really proud to have been selected to stand for the Green Party. <laughs> Gray, you're bringing up the rear this time. You won't have at the end. Okay. Hi there, I'm Gray Sargent. I'm the Labour Party manager. I'm standing uh, in Milton Ward because I was born in Southend and I've grown up here and I'm very proud of our town and I want to make it a better place for us all to live and work in and I want it to be a place that people want to come and visit because we have got a fantastic seafront and I want to promote it. Um, I want to represent somewhere like Milton because it's vibrant, there's a lot going on. Um, some beautiful places and some great things, um, some great cultural activities. But it also has its problems and it has a lot of inequality. Um, you've got bad landlords that have poor conditions for their own tenants, but it also affects their neighbours as well because it blights the streets. Um, we have perhaps not enough children facilities in places like Warrior Square, so kids from disadvantaged backgrounds miss out. And so they're the kinds of things that I believe as a Labour Party candidate, um, we, could, we should do something about. And, and, in, and in the administration, we have actually made a difference um, for the first time uh, after 13 years of having the Conservatives in power. Uh, we've managed to keep care homes open, uh, keep the branch staff and libraries, uh, and protect uh, children's centres. And these are public services that people in South End rely on. Um, and we will continue this despite um, government cuts. Um, the other thing that's important about being a councillor is what you do on the ground. Um, I'm pleased that we've got two very hard-working councillors uh, representing the Labour Party in Milton, uh, Julian Wellane and uh, Cheryl Nevin. And I've been out with them week after week, knocking doors, speaking to voters, um, 
uh, week in, week out, regardless of whether or not it's election time. And we do get things done. Um, and I think that's what makes um, the Australian Labour Party so good, is that we are effective. And you talk about dogmins and stuff. Well, I know Julian spent years pushing and pushing, and he got two new dogmins installed in Alexander Road and Leonard Road. Um, and things like Canudian uh, Road, which desperately needed resurfacing, we've now achieved that, and plans for Alexandra as well. So I think the main reason to vote Labour is we want to see a fairer town and a better town, and your Labour team in Milton will always work all year round to make sure that they deliver for residents. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, I, I went to the um, Evening Echo in Hastings, uh, which were held last Tuesday of last week, and I must say it was absolutely awful. <laughs> oh, anybody else? Were you there? It was so tedious. I've never <laughs> been to a hustings that was so boring as that was. And the main reason was there were no questions from the floor. Um, so I resolved that night that, I, and that we're going to have questions from the floor tonight <laughs> and, uh, and get something happening. Um, so I'm going to throw it open now. When you ask a question, could you say if it's for a particular candidate or if you want all the candidates to, to answer your, your question, please? So it's over to you. I'm young lady in front of you. Okay. Okay, how could you make Milton a better place for children to grow up in? Uh, who's going to go first here? Um, um, oh, Jonathan, you go, if you go first. Okay. Uh, best place for children to grow up here. It's... Um, Got, got to come down, first of all, to safety. Um, there's been incidents um, recently, which we certainly won't go into detail at this particular um, meeting, but it's, uh, you know, working with the police, making absolutely you know our streets are safe, where the police want to sort of work with the council, if you get um, regards better lighting in a certain place um, for that improvement. It's groups, it's fantastic projects, of course, like where we are this evening, what the Milton Community Partnership offer in their social group, other churches, um, in the town, uh, what other provisions, you know, youth um, facilities. It does, and of course, we, it's going to come down to a number of subjects that we're discussing tonight. It's down to sort of the funding that is available, but I hope you know, that helps. Yeah. Okay, so all the candidates are. I'm going to. Uh, Tammy, would you want to, do you want to follow Jonathan with that one? Um, I spoke to Suzanne yesterday, and she is part of Milton Community Centre. She gave me a bit of background information that she's trying to organise days out for families and activities for families. Personally, for me, I'd like to hear from the residents what they would like in their area so that we can go to the council and say, look, have we got provisions to do this? We've got beautiful seafront. We all agree on that. We need to keep that seafront as it is. We don't want to take that away. And families love going there, especially now that the summer's coming. We want to make the most of it. Picnics, beautiful. I think working with community centres, children's centres, hopefully we can move it forward as a community. OK. Um, Bob? Thank you. Well, I think the first thing... I'm thinking about the school situation because I, I believe that in, in not many years' time there's going to be considerable pressure on the school places in, in the centre of South End. Um, several wards involved, um, but um, you, you see, parents need to know that they're not going to be in some difficulty when it comes to getting children into schools that they regard as being suitable. Um, so that's one issue. Um, as regards because, I mean, I brought children up here in this South End, and, and it's always marvellous. You know, we've got the seafront, you know, we've got beautiful parks. Um, there's a lot going for it. A um, lot, lot of people living in far worse places to bring up children. Um, but, obviously, I mean, I, I was lucky. I, I was uh, growing up in a town where we had churches with plenty of scout groups, cub groups, boys brigade, all. There was tremendous choice, you know, and I think these things all help. Um, and, but of course I'm going back to a time when most, mo most women just didn't work, you know, <laughs> they just didn't do it. Um, so it's a different type of society now, but um, obviously places like the, the community here, you know, it's marvellous charity and does great work. But you see most, I mean we're still uh, 30,000 people every day go to London to get a decent wage. I did it for years, you get home at seven in the evening and you have dinner. You know, and you never make a hustings like this. So 
it's this type of community centre here, this group here, does great work for people who are around during the day. But, you know, um, so many people now have to go to London to get living wage, good wages. Um, and the other thing the town can do is to bring in, try and attract more better paid jobs. You know. um, but that's my initial thoughts. Okay, Bob, thank you. Um, and Gray? Um, well, there's two things that I can think of specifically that we want to do as the Labour team in Milton. Um, one is that Cheryl Nevin and I have been pushing for children play facilities in Warrior Square. Uh, we've now had that knocked down in a swimming pool taken away, um, which was used by the community. And we've heard that there should be something there that kids from all sorts of backgrounds can use, um, especially in the summertime when you've just got some kids literally have nothing to do. Um, so we would like to push for that. And also we would like to see... Um, the tennis courts refurbished in uh, Milton Gardens, um, yeah. a facility that everyone, regardless of how much money they have, perhaps can use. Um, and I think that's some of the most important things. It's about having play facilities <coughs> and open green spaces um, for kids to play. Feeder. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the question was about being a safe place for children to grow up in. One of the big issues, I guess, would be road safety. Um, I think it needs, there need to be zones where it's 20 miles an hour. There have been a lot, there have been accidents recently. Um, we want to make it a safe place for, for children to grow up and feel that they can cycle to places, that they can walk safely to school. Um, some of the pavements are horrific. Um, you, you try and push a buggy or you have a, child, a young child on a bike or a scooter. Um, I think that needs to be looked at. And again, I guess that's a borough wide thing, specifically in Milton. Um, if you try and walk somewhere, if you've got a mobility scooter or a wheelchair as well, I think that's definitely something that needs to be looked at. And crossing points and making sure that cars are not parked across drop curves is one of my absolute things that I absolutely hate, just because it does make it very dangerous when you're trying to teach children to cross the road. Um, I agree with the need for open spaces. I think children should be encouraged to feel part of a community and not feel that they have to be shepherded off to different groups to feel safe. I think we should... Um, Milton Park is absolutely lovely for very young children. It would be nice if there was something for older children. Children can grow out of the, the things that they can't very quickly. And I think we definitely need to look at... I mean, obviously, I know that the initial plan for Warriors Square did include the children's playground and it was turned down because of complaints from residents, I believe, which I think is a shame and things like that do need to be looked at again. Um, yes, that's it for our too long. OK. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe your question. You've unlocked the evening. That's what you. That's what you've done. I've got a question over here. I think. What, 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 what was your question? Uh, okay. Okay. Who wants to go first with that? Tell me, tell me you jump Do in. I think that's a good idea? Not at all. Because we're seeing so much car park. Obviously, they've got the one opposite Argos Plaza now. Why would you want another one straight next to it? And I think we all agree, we need that open space. We need some form of facilities there for families. But personally, I don't agree with that. And I hope, as an independent... We wouldn't. Yep. Um, yeah, I also oppose the plans for a coach park, and I'm very pleased that when Julian Welling was elected as your Labour councillor, he um, raised objections to this and halted plans, and we intend to carry on uh, opposing them. Right. Um, John? Okay. I'm just working on the line here now, really. John, John can you go? You go. <laughs> yeah, OK. I mean, to try to make this answer sort of too long, obviously look at a slightly bigger picture as to why that proposal went forward, which was basically because Seaway Car Park um, development and obviously the regeneration of that area. Um, it's a very, very large issue. You know, there's, there, there was concerns sort of local residents near, nearby, uh, but obviously it's a very major um, application, as it were, but, you know, you've got to look at those aspects. Um, so the idea, obviously, was to move from the uh, coach park to Seaway Car Park, and the proposals went to Warrior Square. I certainly vo voiced my concerns through, because, you know, I know how Milton is so, uh, you know, 
over uh, populated and also lots of open space so you know I, I did voice my concerns as to there but the discussion does have to go further as to if seaway development goes ahead where is that uh, sort of coach parking uh, going to go you know in the town where where is there sort of more space uh, again, no i don't think it's an appropriate place at all um I, just, I think it's very dangerous when you've got next to an open space and again, coming back to the issues of road safety, you've got big vehicles trying to turn in the middle of town when there are a lot of pedestrians. But I do appreciate we need somewhere that we are a seaside town and it does bring in tourists, but not there. Um, it, would need to, it would need to be assessed, I think, like the other candidates are saying. We would need to look at what's going ahead with the Seaway Car Park. We'd need to look at other parts of the seafront. People want to come to the seafront in the centre of town. Um, I think that's really important, but it would need to be looked at. And as a, as a whole group, I think it shouldn't just be a, a political party trying to score points and going, we support this and we don't. Everyone's pretty much said that they, they're against it, so therefore it should be possible to come up with a more creative solution, I think, working together. Well, um, I'm not familiar with all the detail on this, but I can see where the problem arises. Um, of course, it used to be a, a big swimming pool in Oro Square, and of course, I mean, I'm a tennis fan, I, I don't watch any other sport at all, um, and swimming to me always seemed rather an unnatural thing to do, jumping into water, you know, it's, you know it just seemed unnatural <laughs> to a human being. Yeah. But having said that, I do think that that space should be, continue to be used for people to exercise their, their bodies and their minds, you know, um, in, and, and, and recreate. So um, I would be opposed to putting a coach park in that centre, so central in the town. Seems that's hurt. Yes. Um, that's it. Okay. Okay. All right. Any? Right. Yes, sir. I'm going down South and High Street, and I just see shop behind to shop with the Bailey sign, so much the brick oven, and all the rest of it. I walk down the bit to the, uh, the Victoria Plaza, the shopping centre there, expensively uh, refurbished. A lot of units not put together. And I remember very well the addictive way in which Victoria Lane's shop there, the little uh, office in York Road, the little independent trains there, the addictive way in which the council's basically shut that down. Now, this is a public place. These are, these are shops, these are businesses that, uh, that serve the community. They also represent a point of interest for those who come to visit the town. Uh, people who are also put off by the, uh, uh, by, by the, by the parking as you can probably best describe as that, they, they jump on people and it puts people off. So what I want to know want from all candidates is what you propose to do to revitalise the high streets and surrounding areas to give people another reason to visit South, not just the uh, our excellent uh, Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. hopefully will remain. But I don't want to see it overly developed by lots of expensive parks going on, bought up by the city's investors. Thank you. So revitalising the high street, who wants to jump in with that one? Well, sure. Rob, go on, Bob. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, we don't shop in Southland very often. Uh, we tend to go to Chelmsford, Colchester, France, Belgium. Um, but um, it's, it's depressing. We, do, we find it depressing. Actually. Um, it's, it's become, what well, I don't know, it's still terribly down market. We had good shops and they've gone. Um, there was a lovely shop that sold nuts. Uh, lots of different types of nuts, uh, graves, was it? Um, and um, the problem, I think, the basic problem is business rates. I, I mean, we've got to get business rates lower. You know, and we've got to be able to, for people to have independent stores in, you know, in the centre of town, they can't afford the business rates. So that's a fundamental thing. Um, but it is just not attractive to a lot of people to see so many sort of charity shops and bargain shops, um, bookmakers and banks. I mean, it, it's not a place that people find attractive. You can go to Chelsea and I got a free bus now because I'm, I used to be tired but I'm now retired. And it's free, I get a free bus to Chelsea and it's better shops. Um, so yeah, it does, we need to look at business rates, the levels, how it's collected, because we've got a bit more <coughs> flexibility now with, with localism, the localism bill. There's more flexibility, we can look at different ways of, uh, of, of dealing with business rates. 
thank you. Thank you. Well, um, um, Tammy, are you going to revive by the, the high street? <laughs> I actually... So get at you. Sorry, I actually work on the high street. Um, I love our high street. Yes, it's changed dramatically over the years. I don't have the answers you're looking for right now. I think that has to be done as a collective group. Everybody needs input. And we need to be working with the local businesses that we've got and try and find a way of encouraging new businesses to take over. But that isn't something I as an individual could do on my own. It, it would have to be a massive group effort. I'm sorry, I don't have to fix for you. Okay, Tammy, thank you. But Vida? Um, I think one of the issues for me um, is I think quite parts of South and High Street don't quite know what they want to be. There seems to be a massive proliferation of very late night bars and clubs. And then there are lots of drunken people in the High Street at the weekend who people come out and smash windows, which means you've got shops boarded up, you've got people having to claim on their insurance. It makes it not an attractive place for shops, for people to want to have shops. I've been out on a Saturday night down to the, down to the seafront when there's been events going on and walked up the high street and you have the urinals in a high street for a whole weekend. I'm sorry. I, I just find we're sort of saying, oh no, it's absolutely fine that people can win the street. That's great. And I think <laughs> it's having urinals there for an entire weekend. It's not just there at night. It means people coming into the high street looking at thinking, well, why, they, why do they need that? Um, I think the high street needs to be made more attractive. I think business rates are definitely an issue. I know that independent traders, there have been rebates, there have been um, recently, people have been able to pay less due to certain money that's coming in, but people are unsure how long that extra money is going to be there to allow them to pay it less. So people are unsure of making plans for the future for long term. Um, I'm not a financial expert, there are obviously lots of people that the council use that can look at what is available and make people aware of what's going on long term, that's why we have experts working with the town. Um, but I think there's definite need to, uh, for the council to encourage businesses in. If it means the council, it's better for the council to lose some money on business rates than have empty shops. I think so. Okay, thank you. There were more people in South End Seafront yesterday afternoon than there were this afternoon. Now, why do I say that? It was about 24 and a half degrees yesterday, about 15 today. In other words, what I'm saying is people, why do people come to the towns like South End? Why do people drive from London? Because of the sea. They flock straight to the seafront. So taking on that idea, when the Conservative administration sort of came back into power it was, uh, years ago, was obviously get, getting that clear link between the seafront and the town centre. And, you know, so people coming to the, the seafront, we've now got good signage up Pier Hill, that was revamped, the lifts up um, to the high street. So the people visiting, parking along the seafront, are coming in, in and supporting the town centre. Um, now, it, it's a struggle. You, the, you can take the subject sort of much, much further. I run a small business, and there is lots, you know, out there. The internet is uh, a big thing, which is a real threat, you know, to, to the businesses, how do you sort of compete against that? Uh, that's something really no council uh, would be able to uh, promote. But what councils can do is obviously attract funding. There was the SHAPE project, S-S-H-A-P-A -A, uh, project a few years ago, which saw the revamp of the high street, saw the, re the repaving, the new street furniture to attract um, you know, people to come to that town. Advertising in other um, in other towns, sort of magazines promoting it on the sea to sea line as you go further along. You know, come to seafront, come to South End for our seafront, and then uh, visit the town centre as well. So I believe a lot, um, a lot done, um, more to be done. I mean, you can go down the sort of issue with regard to business rates, um, a lot of that sort of coming back to uh, the town and to spend, you know, here in the town um, that we all love. Um, I could go on further, sort of address the issues with regard to the clubs in the town, and, you know, saying sort of next to me about do we want people peeing in the streets? Um, sorry, that was a bit crude the way that came out, sorry. Um, but if they were not using the urinals that are going up at, at night, and the issue came to me beforehand, it's in the doorways and the shop owners <coughs> before those were put in, you know, it was really, really awful. Um, there's other issues that help with regard to street pastors, SOS bus, are all there to help with the late night base drifting slightly from your question but I uh, hope that helps thank you okay thank you and Gray yeah I think there's hope for our town centre um, 
I think particularly with the university now here, I've seen a, a lot more people out on the high street. I've seen new cafes, new restaurants, and I think things are starting to pick up again. Um, I think the way forward for a place like South End is to uh, invest in creative industries, and I know that that's what the council have been doing. So we've got the facility such as the Forum, which is absolutely fantastic, and it will bring people into the town centre, and it gives people more of a reason than just shops. Um, so I think that's definitely the way forward, promoting art and music, um, and that gives them more of a reason where, as you can, most people probably buy online nowadays, so um, you need to give um, residents another reason to come into the town centre. Uh, and like all the other candidates have said, it's all about having councillors that will deal with uh, the fly tip and the antisocial behaviour, the issues that can bring down an area. Um, and these are small things that just need to be tackled to help maintain um, a good high street and good shopping areas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy with that? Anybody got any ideas about revitalisation of the high street? It's a good, it's a, I mean, it's a big issue for us, I think. So, so. I was going to guarantee that you uh, reduce rents and rates uh, to smaller businesses, new businesses, start businesses, you get rid of quite a bit of the uh, bookmakers, money lenders, and that kind of thing, and you'll increase the actual worthwhile businesses in the high street. I think what people want to do on the high street is shop. I think what they are doing at the moment is getting dragged down Thank you. Somebody back, yes, yes. I've got reducing the reduction of the parking fees in the front here. Okay, okay. Right. Okay, I'm going to close this down. Oh, uh, yes, we've spoken already. Uh, I want to, on questions of the candidates. Though, but thank you, thank you for that. Thank you. Right. Uh, yes, your hand up, madam. Protect, what would we do to protect what the candidate to... Okay, okay. Who wants it? Okay. Uh, right, I'm with you. Uh, right, who wants to jump in on that one? Green Party we, policies we to be against mm -hmm. all academies and free schools. We would want to return them all to, to being underneath <coughs> the, the government and to be able to assess, to be able to for Ofsted or whoever is bought in to replace Ofsted to actually be able to assess them so that all schools. Can be monitored. We're very anti the idea of academies, particularly when it's forced on a school that doesn't want it. 
There are a lot of schools where the PTAs don't want it, where the governors don't want it, and where the families and the children certainly don't want it. So, that's about that for you. <laughs> okay, okay, Vida. Anybody else want to respond here? Bob, Rob? Bob? Um, well, it's, it's generally, generally speaking, it, it's school governors who, who make these decisions. Uh, you, you can't convert the school into academy unless it's really proposed by the governors of the school. So, it's not correct, sir. It's not correct. <laughs> not correct. No, no. Because there's an involvement that they have no say on what happens in this local authority matter. Well, I was, I was appalled at the situation at Chase. I mean, I, I'm, I, I know the heads, the ex-heads, mother and father quite well. And uh, it's just appalling. I, I have a feeling that, um, that the press said she, she left voluntarily. Well, it, you can read that, you know, as you will. Um, but I've got my suspicions about how all this happened. And um, I, my understanding was that the, the governors, actually, of the school um, have, have to make this sort of decision. But um, I stand corrected. Uh, if, if the local authority would just need more Lib Dems on the local authority, doesn't it? <laughs> I, I'm all for choice. I like choice. To, to be told by the Greens that we're going to have to all go to a com comprehensive school or whatever, or to be told, be told by UKIP that every town's got to have a grammar school in it, excuse me, um, I don't think so. Um, we like choice. We, we want free schools, we want academies where they're appropriate, um, probably not run by you know, second aid car business. But um, also faith schools, and uh, there's an independent sector, which we'll always have. We've got grand schools, we've got good comprehensives. What people want is good schools that they can walk to safely. I mean, I think what I would say at this stage, you know, obviously a decision like that, it's got to be the sort of consultation, you know, what's it, the sort of parents, you know, surely they're the ones. Uh, uh, yes, it's sprung on. There is, I'm not going to say greater than this at the moment, there is a lot of sort of Conservative group and Conservative spokesperson on this who will be saying as it comes forward to sort of council. So I think you've got to sort of watch the sort of press and feedback on this to get the full sort of Conservative view, but, um, but concerned. You've got 120 so. children who chose to go to Chase in next September, and the school they chose to go to is no longer there. And I know one little child is extremely distressed. Mother wrote a letter to the paper, which is there today, because the school he chose is no longer the school. And this man is coming in who has said he is going to re establish uniform and he's going to set up his standards, and he's marching in, and it looks as if he hasn't taken any attention what the school is right now, and it is successful right now. But this is serious, and I think you've just got to watch the different groups, you know, council, how it's taken forward. I, I can briefly mention, no, I, I agree that the lack of concentration yeah. seems wrong, and that parents uh, rightly expect that their children go to good quality schools, and they should get what they apply for. <laughs> yes, and uh, the uh, council has yeah. no control over that school now. No. Has no say on what it does. <coughs> so if they suddenly decide they want to teach something completely obscure, you can't say anything. Absolutely, and that, that is the problem with the government policy. But you will say it takes power out of our hands. Okay, thank you. Right, another question, please, sir. Uh, first of all, Chairman, uh, I'd like to say that your opening and you talk about hustings. Um, to be honest with you, I think you were quite right. I think there should be more questions from the floor. But I do actually think my own personal performance was uh, uh, quite spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was there. I wish I was there. <laughs> I meant with the exception yes. of you. <laughs> It was dull, wasn't it? I mean, I mean, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I was getting to the... I'm sorry, I should be keeping that out of control. I'm actually standing for the parliamentary constituency. Anyway, Mr. Mellie, can I ask my question? Ask your question, yeah, yeah. Anybody 
your first priority for Milton should be the election. Okay, all right. Right, who's going to go first with that? Um, 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 Tammy? To listen to you, the residents, how can I move anything forward if I don't know what it is the residents want? That is what I'm here for. I am your voice, but I need to have that directly from yourselves before I can do anything. I want you to be happy. I want you to feel safe in your own area, and I want you to see progress. Tammy, I do feel safe. I am happy in my own area. And I vote somebody in to make decisions for me and for me not to have to think about it. And I really am tired of being told I'm going to be protected. I choose my candidates to stand on the council to do the society. And they ought to know in their head what to do for the area without me having to keep being consulted and then ignore it. Now, I appreciate what you're saying and I think that's valid. But... I'm human at the end of the day. What if I spoke to quite a few residents, they agreed it, but then there's other residents that may not agree it. There's got to be some form of unity so that it's right for everybody. And that's what I would hope to achieve. Okay, Tammy. Uh, Gray, what would you, what would you um, say to this well, question? It's quite a specific issue um, to do with the Hamlet Court uh, road area of the ward, um, and um, I think, it's, sorry, yeah, um, the issues to do with Hamlet Court <coughs> Road, um, I think it would be my first one because it's something that I've started, so I'd quite like to get it finished. Um, I went to the local community meeting with the police and uh, I raised the issue of aggressive begging along Hamlet Court Road, often with homeless people but also people that are trying to make a, you know, a bit of money and who aren't necessarily homeless and they can be quite aggressive and intimidating towards residents. So that would be perhaps my first thing, because I've raised it already with the police. I would like to follow through with it. Uh, we, we managed to get extra police resources for that part of the town. I would like to see the impact that that has had, and then I'd like to get the relevant charities on board so we could actually do something about um, the issue that, this, uh, that residents have raised with me. Okay, thank you. Sure. Hey, thank you. I mean, I can't, um, I don't think I can sort of answer the first thing, because obviously as um, sitting councillor, but I think what I've got to sort of probably put forward is with the many sort of issues that residents do contact me about, do raise with me when, you know, I chat to them on the doorstep, you know, which one do I sort of pick um, at first to really get more and more involved? And I think it's certainly the people saying the sort of, uh, the, you know, pavements, are we going to get, um, you know, in the potholes? I've had quite a sort of long uh, discussion, uh, you know, sort of council officers, how we can sort of move forward and further improve that situation. Because, you know, I'm guessing many sort of people saying their road hasn't uh, been resurfaced. And although, you know, the years have put forward proposals, some have been done. There have been uh, roads across um, Milton Road um, resurfaced. We need more doing. We need to attract funding um, to get that done. So I think it's um, further work. There's been a lot of work sort of identifying um, the you know, roads are a priority, if you like. Um, so let's move that as well. I mean, there's many others, but uh, you said one, so uh, that's I'll really get my teeth into. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vida? Okay, so it has to be something different. I guess housing. Um, as you all know, obviously, there's lots of houses of multiple occupation in Milton. There's lots of very unscrupulous landlords that don't look after properties. One of the biggest issues for me is that there are lots of people who, for various reasons, are... They're on housing benefit, lots of whom are vulnerable, they may have mental health problems, um, they may be people with drink and drug problems who are being helped by charities, and they are put into some appalling housing, which we're paying for. You know, this, this comes from the council money, um, and I think we need to set up some sort of licensing. If the landlords are not looking after their properties, they are not making sure these people are safe, there, are, there have been situations where people have had, they haven't had secure front doors, so their doors have been kicked in, um, windows have been smashed, if the landlords are not dealing with this, we shouldn't be paying them housing benefit to, to house these people. And these houses of multiple occupation need to be looked at in a lot more detail. Than not as well. Um, Rob. Um, well, I suppose if I've got to go for one, it's got to be parking stress. And I'd like to see a bus service operating circular around the town. There's no bus on the seafront, to my knowledge, really. Um, that goes, you know, right the way along, seven miles of beach. And we, if we had a circular bus service in this town, um, and there are moves afoot, things, are, they are being talked about now, so I think we're going in the right direction on that. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm on the committee of the uh, South End Pensioners campaign, and we're 
we are beginning to start a campaign on the buses that they run in the town. I think we've got to live with private companies. I don't see that changing, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Big mistake, I think, when they... We used to run a very good bus service in this town, and we owned it. You know? yeah. But it's part of the motor group. But, but, and it's the same with the railways. I mean, it's just far too expensive to, to, to sort of re-nationalise the railways. We, my party looked at it 20 years ago. You, you can't do it. It's too expensive. So we've got to live with it. And the Germans <laughs> live with it. The Green Party at Costa Rica. Excuse me. And the Germans. Sorry, would you mind? Do you mind? I'm speaking, Mr. Cross. I'm speaking. Yes. Um, if, if we had proper, a more attractive bus service, and and try to discourage people, we we can shorten some of the double yellow lines in Milton, make more parking spaces available in that way. There are things we can do, but the immediate thing you notice in this ward is you can't park unless you feed a metre. You know. Uh, over the back there. Okay. <coughs> Mr. House um, touched on it earlier on, um, I would like to ask all the candidates how they feel about South Bend and Garden. Do they consider South Bend as being a seaside resort or not? And what is sort of percentage do they consider it as being a seaside resort? And also, um, what would they be prepared to do to make um, South Bend more attractive to tourism. Okay. Or is it a seaside resort? And do you make it how do you make it attractive to tourists? Yeah. Great. Have you yeah. ever had that? Would you ask that? Um, yes, I do regard it as a seaside town, but it needs to be seaside town. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
being vital. And I think we need to make sure if any changes in the future, it is considered. Okay, Tammy. Thank, thank you. Um, and uh, Jonathan? Yeah, thank you. I mean, very much. Uh, Seaside Town, I think, has sort of touched on before how much has been invested in, in that area. Uh, I don't want to sort of repeat what I was sort of saying before, but, you know, what said about Pier Hill. Pier itself, with the uh, Royal Pavilion at the end, um, at the end there, has attracted, you know, events going on. I think one of the things that's held us back a little bit over the year with sort of really, really expanding the seaside town is the number of hotels um, around. Now that is improving as we know, new one opened what, in the last um, month um, our very good uh, guest houses that are across um, Milton Ward uh, so yeah, we can just improve that, we're getting there on hotels but you need more people to stay you know, if you compare to the likes of Brighton that have all the, uh, the sort of big, uh, the big names, that's sort of, sort of coming into South End, you can then start to have big conferences, uh, more people staying. Because it always has, used to have the um, statistics down there that we had more day visitors to the town than actually what um, Blackpool did in uh, mid-season. But Blackpool beat us with actually people um, staying over. So it is attracting people to stay over. They'll spend more. It goes back to the question earlier, doesn't it, about the um, high street. But um, no, I'm very, uh, very proud of the, uh, the seaside um, we have. I think we've got okay. a bit more discerning tools now. I think what is, what they want is something unique yeah. about our seaside as well. And we're losing our uniqueness. Yeah. We're sort of becoming a run of the mill seaside resort like any other. We're getting rid of all our, all our heritage is being destroyed. Our past is, we're losing all our past. That is what we need to hold on to. We've got an advantage. We've got two rail systems in London, good rail systems, that's our thing. And we need to take advantage of it. We also need, when people to get off the train, they want a good impression, a first impression, and a good last impression. And they're not getting it. When they get off that train, like here, Western, what do they see? It's a slum. in rubbish on the streets. It's horrible. What sort of good first and last impression is that? And uh, that's all I have to say. I haven't heard anything from anybody. Can I continue my, uh, my answer? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob, no, I don't hear Bob. Bob, can you, can, you, can you assure our friend at the back there? Yeah, yeah I mean, I agree. I mean, it, it, when people come into the town from London or wherever, um, they, they, they need to be greeted by something where they, it's attractive, you know, and, and, and not ugly. <laughs> and and I, I, as I say, I, I walk sometimes in, on a Wednesday morning in, in, in parts of this ward, and uh, I'm appalled by, by the sight of bags of rubbish. You know, and it's what hits you first because of the colour, the pink bags. You see that, the lovely properties. Lovely. I mean, this ward's got a beautiful property. So many iconic buildings. You know, you've got the Cliff Pavilion. Sorry? No, um, <laughs> South End, South End's got far too many flats to, to Wheelie Bins wouldn't work. Exactly. Wheelie Bins. What's the art? Well, I think, I, I still think that people can get their rubbish on their property, behind the gate, wherever. They're supposed, if they can see it, they're supposed to take it. That's well, the bigger problem is people who stumble on their Big, the big consumer items. It's a thoroughly wasteful, selfish consumer society. People dump their microwaves, fridges, uh, uh, yeah, you get the ragged moment that comes with another thing, yeah. rip the compressor out that's got copper on it. Yeah, I TV know. sets, they'll smash on the ground to get the copper out of those. Yeah. Fridges, yeah, yeah, yeah. settings. Now, the reason why they do this is because the council will charge to pick, it, pick these yeah. items up. Well, if Even it, if it's more money to actually the damn things cleared away afterwards, there's a broken glass everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, that's, that, that problem and you see this stuff, it's ugly, it's messy, What's, you know, what, something needs to be done about it. Well, I think that the, count, the council, um, I mean, the contracts... Yeah, like, it's privatisation, outsourcing. The, the, contracts, the contracts that have been dealt with, I, I, I obviously, as a, just a citizen, I can't dictate, but I would have thought that um, many, many towns and cities, um, Worcester City, for example, the, they have regular bulky item collections. Mm -hmm. They do it every month or two. And, you know, 
twice a year yeah. in where I used to live. Yeah. Just, just, you know, many, many, many councils. Madness, honestly, yeah. when it was there. Many councils can do this. I never used to tell you when, because otherwise everyone would be stacking stuff up. <laughs> well, honestly, can I, can, I say, can I say about tourism, though? I, I, I actually I, I think it's a day, a, a day tripper town, this, to be honest. I mean, I go to a, a, a resort. I, I go to a resort in North Belgium as a day trip, you know. I mean, people are not going to come to South End very, in large numbers to stay overnight, I wouldn't have thought. No. You get a room in August. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't come back. Apologise, Jim. <laughs> To actually, to actually make yeah. up the ice of parks and refuge places contracts yeah. is much less expensive than trying to clear up the ice. I'm not saying that a lot of these items are still of value. I mean, the, some of these fridges, for instance, like a, it's because they don't go with people's kitchens and such. These items could be reused, they could be redeployed in council houses yep. or whatever, yep. they could be sold at charity shops. Yep. And we used to have a situation where, where stop round two, you could actually buy items that got stuck aside. I think they recently, I think I've heard from somebody that may have introduced it, but time someone would get the whole lot. Re reuse before recycle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nothing is pathetic consumerist waste. It's yeah. the planet. But I, mm. I live in Westborough and, and I'm, I'm used to it. I've got, most of our street furniture is upholstered. You know. It's ready. <laughs> it's ready. <laughs> So I sympathise. You know, oh, 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 okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll just say on the point with regards to sort of recycling furniture, I think well, it's a great shame. Health and safety is obviously very, very important, but sometimes does it go sort of really, really too far? I think the example that I'm trying to give is when I was trying to sort of get rid of the, the what, 15-year-old sofa, which would have been good, you know, somebody could have used that, could have gone to the sort of um, Hope Centre charity. I've tried a number of charity shops, and because it didn't have the label, because it didn't have the fire label on from the years ago, it could have taken, so it ended up just having to be dumped. Well, most of and the price a waste. It's probably 10 years old, it will have those fire retardant uh, you know, labels. Yeah, yeah it must have been just, uh, just beyond that. Uh, shall I, 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 you know, I mean, you obviously know our beloved MP, what I've written to about this, it's very selective about what things he asks. I've actually met him in person to discuss this, what he's written about, it, along with many others. To promote, to promote ideas like, uh, uh, you know, like free cycle, but again, nothing. Take it. Okay, look, I'm going to close. I, I look, there were one hand there, and I, I did have a question in the front and one over the back, so let, I'll just have yours now, mate, maybe. Um, I'm a bit late, so it's all right. Been asked, so it's quite broad, but I, think, I hope you can know what the candidate is talking about. The views are on bedrooms house, and I think that the views are on living wage and on um, zero hours contracts, and I've been Right, this is a this is a national question. Uh, I'm going to allow it. I'm going to. Okay, okay. 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 All right, I'm allowing it. I'll allow it. Oh, uh, great. Come yeah. on, you answer. Okay. okay, you're right. It is okay. national policy, but it affects local people. Um, quite simply, if there is a Labour government after May, we will get rid of the bedroom tax. We will promote the living wage by um, tax incentives for local employers mm -hmm. um, to pay the living mm -hmm. wage. And in terms of zero-hour contracts, we will abolish exploitative zero-hour contracts. If you work regular hours, you're entitled to a regular contract. It's okay if you're perhaps a, a parent or a student and you want an occasional hours every week and that kind of thing. But there's too many people that don't know when they're going to get four hours or if they've got 40 hours. You can't manage a household budget on that. Uh, it's unfair and it needs to stop. And um, that's the three things the Labour government is doing. Okay, thank you. John, Jonathan. Uh, thank you. I mean, I think it's been touched on. He's sort of a national um, issue. I mean, if you've bedroom tax, if that's the uh, right term for us, I know that's um, always been nicknamed. It's, I think it basically comes down to the shortage, you know, of sort of housing uh, that's available um, out, out there. And, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so, let's hear. Yeah. Let's hear. I'm sorry. I'm a local politician, let's and, hear uh, with you. and you know, there is the shortage of houses. You know what? Uh, you know what uh, can can be done if you've got people in the house and there's all the spare uh, rooms. You know that's that's where they're coming from. But um, that's all I'm going to say. Um, say on that. Um, the, uh, Okay, Vida? Yeah, I'm quite happy to answer a question on this because you say it does affect local people and one of the big problems that's caused this is the mass sell-off of council houses over the past sort of 30 years. Um, we definitely need to continue with what's been going on in South End in building more council houses um, and we need to be doing this with repealed bedroom packs. Um, it's disgusting. People are being given penalties because they have a disabled member of their family who, um, or somebody that got a child that um, aspires to go to university and they're told that they're not allowed to have a spare room for when they come back from the holidays. Um, and I think it's disgusting. It's, it makes people not want to do, you know, think, well, actually, no, I can't go to university. Where would you get the money from to build more council houses in the London borough? I think we do better. Didn't tell you Yeah, there's, there's money there for... something on that. Um, it's... It's already happening, yeah. As the, the current administration within South End has already started building council houses. There's one being built, and I believe there are some being in the planning situation in Shoebrook, I believe, at the moment. Um, so, yes, I mean, it is Green Party policy. As we said, it's, it's difficult because this is a national, it is a national question. So, then the Green Party policy is, is to be building 500,000 new council properties. Um, Empty, it's doing nothing. I actually asked, yeah. uh, I actually offered to Mr. Jonas Dunwich, yeah. he, he, he claims to be a cyclist, but I'll tell you what, if we can deal with the potholes, I'll give you a, I'll give you a cycle drive. All this property is doing nothing, it's been brought back into use. Whether it's some kind of relationship to councillors and private vendors, bring places back into use, that needs to be done. But it's scandalous, the amount of empty property that's just deteriorating, going to waste. Yeah. In actual fact, this is hard to buy twice a week. In actual fact, council is not allowed to take over. Uh, this is not council's fault. Council is not allowed to take over these properties unless a uh, remarkably long time has passed. Mm -hmm. Now, the policy is actually to reduce that time uh, to mm -hmm. practically zero. If a property is laid out in derelict, the council will be given funding and the ability to take those back to the house. Can I um, sell me a box of house actually? Right, though, I'm going to ask, yeah, yeah. Going to ask Tammy to respond to, to, to this question, and then, and then Robin, I'll bring you back in, Jonathan. Okay, okay. okay. Ta Tammy. I totally understand where you're coming from on the bedroom pack. Um, yeah. Honestly, I don't know what the independent policy is for that. Obviously, I, when I introduced myself, I said I've got 11 years' experience working within the benefit sector. And obviously when the bedroom tax come in, I saw how much that affected people. And I helped people appeal it. Some were successful, some weren't. That is an area I would personally fight for the residents if they've experienced that. Tammy, you're independent. You don't have to ask any other independent. You are independent. You have made your mind up. You don't have to ask the other independent. Just remember that. Thank you. I will take that on board. Obviously, I do rely on the support of my fellow candidates because working together, I'm likely to get more guidance and more knowledge and then I can hopefully pass that on okay. to the residents. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, and Bob? Uh, yeah, just quickly, um, it's, a na it's a national policy, of course. Um, um, uh, the fairness is behind it. That's what, was, that's what drove it, fairness. The spare room... The spare room. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but it is. Spare, the spare room subsidy was brought in to sort of equalise the situation in public and private, pu public and private domains. Now, I can tell you that my party is very unhappy with what was introduced. And no, you'll find, if you let me finish, you'll find that one of our distinguished MPs has introduced a private member's bill on this subject, and to my knowledge, it's still going forward. Um, because massive, massive, massive amendments are uh, going forward because aspects of it are deeply unfair. Labour put forward several opposition motions to abolish it, and your party voted against it. We didn't How want to abolish it. <laughs> 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 no. So you're a favourite bedroom tax. Thank you. I want to amend, seriously amend, the spare room subsidy. How? Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I'm not a... We haven't heard anything about the zip... Zero hours yet, and Jonathan, you're going to say something about that. Didn't well, well yeah, yeah, I'll say something about. That. I think first, I just wanted to on the um, basically the empty sort of housing policy to try and bring it a bit more back down to local because it's clearly a concern across the town. And there's been the um, yeah, empty home sort of strategy in the, the council been uh, in action a while, and I'm told that actually 50 properties a year are brought back into use um, under that policy. Probably going to ask where they all are, but um, but they're the figures that I'm told has come back in uh, from that policy. I mean, um, so zero zero hours contracts. But obviously, I employ uh, people in my um, business very much on um, contract. You know, I might not be talking maybe my party policy on here, but I'm uh, talking uh, to local council what I feel is important. I think it is important. I think the difference for me, the difference between I used to do, um, I, when I was a student nurse, I used to do agency work, which fitted around what I used to do. Um, it meant I could come and work for, during the holidays when I wanted to. But that was agency work. I wasn't tied to the, to the agency. If, I, if they phoned me up and offered me work, I didn't have to do it. I could just say, oh, no, I'm doing it else. Why? With a zero hours contract, you are tied to that job. If you turn down the work, they can say, well, you're not working for us anymore. And I think that's the difference. It's, Doing work that you choose that you will be available as and when you are available, and it puts, um, it's very different from having a zero hours contract with a company where they put, where they say you are not allowed to work with anyone else, and we will give you the work that we choose as and when we choose. Can I say on zero hours, um, the, the, the most distinguished survey I've seen on this um, was the biggest, I believe. Uh, they said that roughly 60% of the people involved were relatively happy with with the situation, and about 40% were relatively unhappy. Um, so working on that basis, but, but as I understand it, you see there are some employers who exploit people on, on these things, yeah. and it's the exploitative zero hours contract, which the government, excuse me, uh, when, which the government has actually decided to legislate. So the, the exploitative contracts have got to be stopped and will be, but, but an awful lot of people enjoy, particularly students, enjoy the flexibility of the. I suspect 60% are who said they have a because they've not known anything else. Because they've left school, gone straight into zero hours, and they've never had an experience on the security They've never had, you know, the freedom to have holidays, to go to family events. You know, I have nephews and nieces who are all in zero hours contract, and it's really unhealthy for family life. I never see them. They never see their family. They're not allowed to get time off for things because they're, they're fighting the over tax. Yeah. So the whole family dynamic is broken down because yep. the kids, young adults, can't spend time with their own family. It's just cool. um, And I assume that they're applying for full time work, I assume. It's full time work. It's more than full time. They've got more than one job because they, one job doesn't give them enough money to rent a property. Oh, so that's that's the they're they're the Okay. And it also makes it impossible for people, as you say, to rent. If you, landlords will not take people on without having specific needs. And they are exploitative. They're exploitative because you don't have any employment rights. That's true. You don't buy any money. Okay, I'm going to move. I, I, I'm going to close this part of the proceedings. I, 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 I just have a feeling it's going to go on. I've had, I've had a good, I've had a, a signal from a friend in the front here. So, so you, and yourself, and then yourself over the back. Have you still got your question, sir? Okay, let's have your question. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little concerned for motorists in the local area and local businesses affected by recent parking increases. Can each of you tell me what your stance is on future increases in parking charges in the area? Okay, parking charges in the area. Uh, who would like to go first on that question? Um, jo uh, Jonathan, okay. <laughs> current uh, situation. Well, yes, you're right. I mean, parking um, charges went up sort of under the, uh, the current administration. Um, I would, uh, and then people in the audience will say, well, parking charges went up when, uh, when my party was uh, in control as well. But what I would say is they only went up once in the last five years. Um, so they've gone up this time, an average between about 11 and um, 20%. Um, why have they gone up? I know, I mean, I, 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 
proposed um, the increases. I, I think really it, it's, there's been some towns actually this has proved that in fact if you have parking charges actually slightly lower, in fact the income can go up because you're attracting more people to come into those car parks, you keep putting them up. And I mean you've now got the situation in the town centre that one hour parking is £1.10p. And you sort of ask the average person, have you got that old 10? If you haven't got 10p in your pocket, then you can pay £1.20 or £1.50. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, that's a concern that the parking charges went up. Also, of course, the residents' parking permits um, in some areas, not all, there's some schemes that, um, that stayed low. You've got the situation now, we've got some permits at £15 across the ward, some up to 90 uh, So that was a concern as well. Right. Um, um, I'm going to obviously come at this from a Green Party policy because we obviously try to discourage people from driving when it's not necessary for short journeys. Um, we would want to encourage part of the Green Party policy is to have secure, site lock, proper lockable cycle places within town so that people don't aren't just chaining it to a railing. Um, we're actually going to have proper places where people can put bikes down for ch so the children can also be encouraged to cycle. Um, I can't comment on, I don't know background to know about the recent how much the parking is going up. I don't drive, so it's not something I have been aware of. I can comment on residents' parking. I've spoken to people who are very angry about the disparity around the borough. Um, I've spoken to one lady who's a blue badge holder because of a disabled child. She pays residents' parking in her street, but because it's near the high street, people who come into town are allowed to park for periods in her street, which seems complete madness. We talked earlier about encouraging people to come into the town to spend yeah. money. Yeah. And yet we're putting these charges up all the time, which is throwing people away. We're also competing in our street against things like eBay, etc. Mm -hmm. And the computer, which is making a great effect on buying from our street. Yeah. So we should make it easier. I come back from work with Jonathan and Flavie. We should, in fact, take the prices down rather than going up. Would you cut? Well, no, you can get more income. Um, uh, Gray, I'm going to ask you to respond, Gray. I would love to see car parking charges come down, and I'm disappointed that it went up. But local government is being cut to the bone. It really is. When you're acting children's centres, potentially losing staff in libraries, there's simply not enough money coming around, and parking charges are a source of council revenue, and you've got to make priorities sometimes, and it's unfortunate that parking has had to go up, but unfortunately that's the reality of government cuts um, to local government. Um, so the taxes, the business is failing, increase turnover, increase the profits. Pardon? So if you, get the, if you get business becoming more successful, they'll pay more, more, more taxes as a result of Absolutely, but whether or not they go to, yeah, the local government. I would love to attract more people to town. I think we need more. Absolutely. Down. Take more money. But will that come into the council to pay for the library facility? Just reduce it, where is it, one pound, ten p an hour? You reduce it to 50 It's priorities, and this is the thing. We can all talk about what we'd like to do, and we'd all like to save public services and reduce car parking, reduce council tax, all these things. But when things are tough, you need to prioritise what you want. Um, and we wanted to keep our care homes open and keep our staff libraries and our branches um, and to protect children's centres. And unfortunately, that's the compromise that we had to make. And unfortunately, when you decide who you're going to put your ballot, uh, your cross uh, against in the ballot booth, um, you are going to have to vote for a candidate that will have to deal with a tough situation when it comes to local government. And it's not pleasant, it's not nice, it's not something I want, but that's the reality of it. Bob? Thank you. Um, well, a bit of a green, actually, because we've got a green thread going through most of our policies. Um, I, I think the South End problem, in the high street, and, and surrounding areas. I think that occurred partly because there was a, a, a reduction made on the seafront. So the, the council, in its wisdom, decided that they would reduce parking on the seafront later in the evening. And, and to balance it, they had to put up, they thought they had to put up the parking charges near the high street. That, that's what's behind the very local situation, I believe. But, I mean, I can remember 15 years ago when my wife was on the council. Um, she told me then that, that the council relied on about £3 million pounds a year from car parking. I mean, it becomes, you see, something they come to rely on as income, you know. And, and, and that's basically behind it. Um, 
personally, I think when you've got ten railway stations in a town, you've got buses that, uh, on, on the A13 here for, for Milton. Um, and, and we've got, I mean, you know, six million people a year coming into Southern. Three times the, the people that go to, you know, to see the Taj Mahal. Um, you've got to think about uh, using alternatives to the car. You know, it's not saying... Coming to London, you're coming by bike. No. <laughs> Public transport. <laughs> they get a train. No, local trains. Train. Got you got trains. Local trains, yes. Use bicycles where you can. Do something, yeah, do something about it. I mean, it's really, yeah, there's been at least a couple of bike breaking on desks. We've been frequently used bikes. Make cycling okay, safer. And then have to make the right decision, the right personal choice. Yeah, use the car for service. If you've got stuff to carry around, shopping or whatever, but use your bike if you want to get from A to B. There are health benefits of it. You can get a subsidised bike through the for that government scheme. Yeah. That's going to but, it's, it's, quite, it's all a question of making the right informed choice. All right, Gray, you want to come back on? Yeah, just said, briefly, uh, just one sentence. I know it's an unpopular opinion. I would quite like to see them reduced, but I'm not going to stand here and promise you something that I don't think I can deliver in the current situation. That's simply it. Okay. 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 Um, there was a, a, a question at the back. A long while ago, wasn't it? So can you give us your question, sir? Sorry. The uh, thing about South End Council, they've got money enough to build in big white buildings. They, they built the uh, Central Station, which is the Central Station, the lifts don't work. They built the royals on three floors. It was so underused, they completely removed one complete level of the royals because it's an underused shopping centre. They've now built a uh, red gun Victoria shopping centre. Part of two thirds of it is empty. They keep coming out of these grandiose plans. The point I'm saying is the sacks of the king treasures. They want to build a specialised museum on the seafront, but it's going to be a conference. It's going to be a cinema, and in the corner is going to be the museum. Why can't they use the facilities? And I'd like to know why they can't, if they can support having the Saxon treasures put in the old library or somewhere else, a building that already exists. <laughs> Right, I'm going to ask Jonathan to respond first of all. Jonathan is, is a, a, being a councillor at the present time. Jonathan. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, well, a few questions there. Um, Pier, Pier Hill lifts um, that don't work from time to time. Yeah, that's an issue that we've been sort of aware of over the years. The contractors sort of brought in, they've got to pay um, to get it working. There's been different parts that have been needed um, for the lift. Actually, the gentleman sitting in the back over to the... I won't name names, but there's another person sitting here in the audience that's quite often uh, reporting that issue uh, to me um, to get it um, sorted. I think it, it is a very, very overused... Um, no, I won't say... You've got somebody in a wheelchair and you're pushing them and those lifts are broken. That is... It's not decisive-friendly, this town. You've done nothing that's no, um, well, I mean, it would have to be um, compliant with regard to sort of uh, disabled access of issues. It's got to be. It's how would it got to uh, the first place? But I think that's a different issue to when it's broken, because when it's broken, you need to get on to the, uh, the contractors um, that's in charge and make sure that it is rectified. And believe me, I have reported on many, many occasions to, uh, to, to get that lift um, working. Um, the Royals and having sort of an empty... Law. I think that sort of comes down to the conversation that we've already had about rejuvenating the um, high street. And we can't, as a council, sort of say to a company, you will open, you will open a shop there. <coughs> you can put investment. Uh, they're built, uh, these places, they're built. They, and it's a big South End Victoria, yeah. uh, the Victoria Shopping Centre, two thirds of the centre. Yeah. The Royals, they don't build the Royals. It was so big, they had to remove a complete level. Yeah. So, if you look where the food hall is, above it, you'll see where all the shops have been planted off. Yeah. Why are no. they building more shops when there's no demand? Yes. And we want building museum when there's already... I'm coming on. I'm coming on to that one. I'm coming on to that one. But, uh... Yeah.
Okay. Okay. Right. Um, okay. So, and the roles, I mean, the planning for roles came in, with, I don't know when that was, I, think I, I do vaguely remember as a kid that going up, I think it's about mid-80s, uh, the Royce uh, was built, and in fact, it's funny, it brings back memories of that, I remember, do remember the food course, actually the uh, ground floor and I come to talk about it. Um, it's, you know, as I say, it's, it's the continued on discussion with regard to how to get high streets going, going more with the threats, the competition that they have. Um, the museum on the front, I mean, that were all that's proposed going into the, uh, the Cliff Gardens. I had to be sort of careful when that application came forward to the council. Um, you know, I could say a few words on it, but it is right adjacent to where I live, so I couldn't be, um, fortunately, be too, um, too involved. But I was able to say a few words of um, sort of concern. I think at the time the funding uh, was provided then for the slippage um, in front of uh, like the Cliff Town Parade there, um, which was done. But obviously that's you know, their dream, not mine, in the, in the future. Um, for that museum, we'll have to see in years to come if that comes to anything. But you're right, use old buildings. It's, if you've got the buildings there and the investment to um, bring it up, I, I would look to that first. Well, it's not an existing building particularly that's big enough. That would be me, that was me, yes, Matt. But, uh, yes, does this come? Uh, exactly. I couldn't speak on that because. This, uh, Yeah, what I'm saying is I didn't um, back that um, uh, for a type of reason. Not that maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right, Greg, I'll ask Greg to now to respond to that, this question. Yep. Um, no. Yeah, I oppose the idea of a cliffs museum. I don't think it fits in with the natural look of cliffs. Um, I'm pleased that uh, the Northern Labour team have been vocal about their opposition towards it, and I think it's a perfectly sensible suggestion to have the Saxon King um, treasure in um, Pride Park. Thank you, Greg. Sammy? Oh, I agree. As an independent, Saxon King should be either placed in Quarry Park in the museum we've got there. I mean, they've done it up and they have actually done it very well, I think. And I do think our history should remain in that area or go back to the old museum that they've closed down now, which is now an art gallery. Combine the two if need be. The museum's still there. No, museums are there. The Yeah, you could combine the two, yeah. personally. But I, as an independent, I think the Saxon King should be in the Park. And the Street Park. Okay. Um, That's right. Thank you, Bob. Well, yes, I'm afraid I, I've never liked this idea of building on the West Cliff. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Um, it, it took a previous administration 10 years to get the cliffs slip sorted out. Why on earth it took 10 years, God knows. Um, but the museum, you see now, I'm told, I, I went to Sutton Poo not long ago, which is another major Saxon site. And when they heard there, when the staff there heard that the council here were thinking of putting these Saxon remains in, in, in onto the seafront with, with the funny kiss me quick hats and the toffee apples and all the rest of it. They just laughed. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. It needs to be near where the grave was. And I have yet to discover who owns that piece of land where the grave was actually found. Um, uh, I don't know whether Councillor Gar Garson knows, but, um, I, you know, we need to find out who owns that land and, and can we use it. It needs to be in Priory and Prittlewell. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a no-brainer. Right, be done. Yeah, I'm no old state earlier on that that's, that would be my policy anyway about no development on the cliffs. Um, I agree, Skip's done some fantastic work looking into this over the past few years. They've come up with some great suggestions which have roundly been ignored by the administration and the council. 
Um, Faya Anskip have said, we talked earlier about the uniqueness of South End. That is a fantastic unique point to bring people in, is the treasures of the Saxon King, the sheer numbers of people that go to places like Sutton Hoe. Um, the education, we would have schools come from all over to visit. We would have people come from around the world to visit. And if you can combine that, if you can have that somewhere near Priory Park so they can also visit the Priory, um, and then you've got also the, the leisure facilities that are there. You're, you're talking about a different aspect of South End, but we need to celebrate all of that. I, think. I don't think so. I tell you before we started that we wouldn't go beyond nine o'clock tonight. Are, are, you, are you happy with that, that I, if I stick to those grounds? I, 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 I was talking to one of the candidates, I was, saying, I was saying, let's see how it goes. If it goes beyond eight o'clock, <laughs> so it's going very well. So I'm going to ask one more question, and then I'm going to ask the candidates to, to wind up with a, a, in a similar way to the way they started. Uh, okay. You were talking about the green, the West Cliff. Now, how, what would the candidates do to prevent places like the Esplanade Club, which I believe has been sold? The planning application, according to the ECHO, is for a five-story building, but the Estuary Club is only about three stories. So if it's going up to five stories, it's starting to encroach on conservation areas. So how are the candidates going to protect our seafront from becoming commercialised and overdeveloped? Okay, is everybody clear about that question? Yeah, okay. Um, all right, uh, Bob. Oh, well, yeah, I know that pub quite well. I used to play jazz there once a week. Um, yeah, it's a, I mean, as, if I was elected, I'd be a, an extremely junior councillor and I'd probably put on a working party uh, and kept well away from any scrutiny or, uh, or planning. Um, but as a, as, as a representative, um, I'd, I'd be wary about the height of this, this development. Um, I mean, it, it's, it, it's flats, isn't it, going on? It's flats, so you're talking about dwellings on our cliffs, you know, which is... Yeah. Well, well, you know... Has it been improved? No, yeah, no. Um, I don't know. Um, but, but, I don't know. <laughs> the committee decide. I have to say, I would be guided by my colleague who's chairman of the uh, development control and uh, to some extent find out a, a bit more detail. But uh, I, I would approach it rather apprehensively um, because of the height issue. Right, Vida. Yeah, again, I said I'm against our development of the cliffs. I think when people are aware that the Eskimo is an old pub and yes, it's was going to be taken down when it was suggested that a hotel was to be built there. I think a lot of people thought, good, as you said earlier, we need more hotels and a quality hotel on the cliffs to replace a pub. Not a problem, but I think it's completely inappropriate to have five flights of flats with, as you say, you know, this is, this is, not, this is aimed at people buying it from outside. This is not going to help local people who can't get on the housing ladder. It's not going to house any of the people that sort of, you know, that are struggling to find somewhere nice. This is, this is for people from outside. Um, and so I would definitely be against it. Tammy? I think it all depends on I would oppose because okay. it doesn't fit with the cliffs. Obviously, we've all agreed that we could do with more attraction at the down the seafront. A hotel might have been possible, but personally, I would oppose any residential accommodation. I'm going to go to Graham now. Yeah. yeah, very similar to the other candidates. Well, I'm not against all development. Uh, in this specific area, um, where it is in the Cliff Gardens, it would impact on the Cliff Town Conservation Area. Uh, many residents that I've spoken to uh, along Clifton Terrace have talked about their view being spoiled. Um, it doesn't seem entirely appropriate for residential accommodation to be built there, and it doesn't quite fit in with the aesthetics of the place. Um, and on them grounds, I believe the council can um, oppose application. Okay, thank you, Graham. John? Um, it, it gives a little bit more sort of background, obviously, this particular application. It, permission was given three, four years ago, actually, for the hotel. I'm sure that did include um, flats as well at the time. Um, the height at the time was absolutely vital. I mean, it was a very active um, group, quite rightly so. Um, you know, the residents that sort of uh, live near there, and again, if I do need to declare an interest of living quite close to that site, I'll 
on record. Sorry, it's happy of being sort of a councillor that you're so careful to declare interests if you need to. But yes, permission was given uh, for that for a few years ago, obviously, but it included a hotel, which following the discussion we've had today, you know, welcoming the sort of hotels into the town. It looks like that the new application, of course, still to be decided. If it is just for flats, you sort of look at it and you think, well, what is actually the local area going to uh, gain by uh, just that? And the height, if it's going higher, which was the concern at the time, um, well, I, you know, I wouldn't, even if I stopped me taking part of planning committee by saying it uh, now tonight, I, I wouldn't uh, support it if the height goes over the uh, cliffs. There'd just be no, uh, unless I was really convinced um, by, by benefits of it, how much social housing, you know, would it include, sort of questions like that. But no, uh, deep, deep concern. Deep concern. No, you're right, no, I didn't go there. Okay, Jonathan, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to ask now the candidates to um, wind up in the way that we started. I'm going to do it in reverse order, um, but I'm going to ask you to do, uh, not, not more, again, not more than four minutes um, uh, why, why, um, why you feel you want to be elected, and just, to, and just to put your pitch again as we close up. So, Gray, I'm going to go with you first, if you okay. would do that. Uh, in, 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 uh, thank, you. Maximum. thank you for coming along tonight. Um, and hearing what I have to say. Um, I'm standing for the Labour Party because I believe in fairness and reducing inequality, and I believe in administration we have done that by protecting vital services that people rely on. And I know in Milton Ward we're working hard to get more children's facilities in the area, which will help kids from deprived backgrounds. And really that's why I would vote Labour, because we're a party of doing stuff. Um, it's all very well to have nice ideas and to talk about things, but that's why I got so involved with South and Labour, because I know that we can week out we're knocking on doors and we're dealing with issues and it's fly ticking, it's potholes, it's parking. And we get things done for residents and that's why I'm proud to say that I'm part of the Labour team and I hope that I can serve the residents of Milton well in May if elected um, and I hope I can count on your support. Thank you. Peter? Okay, I haven't specifically prepared anything for this. Um, I'm hoping you've listened to what I've had to say tonight. I'm, and I've shown that I'm really passionate about Milton Ward. This is the ward that I particularly wanted to stand in. Um, I wasn't, this is the ward that I care about most, I guess, and this is the ward that I think I would like to be involved with and representing the people. I'm still going to be here. Um, if I'm not elected, I'm still going to be involved with things that go into Milton Ward. Um, I'm still going to be working here. I'm still going to be part of the community myself. Um, if you vote for me, I'm very determined to get my voice across. I'm determined to be heard, and I'm very willing to listen to what people want. Yes, that's, uh, I don't need four minutes. <laughs> and Bob? Well, um, I, I'm, I'm really motivated to uh, get in, more involved in Milton. and I've got free time now. Um, and <coughs> it does mean that I'll be sort of highly available. If, if anyone wants to ring me up, they can just ring me up or email me or whatever. Um, and I just keen to see more liberal values, if you like, um, on our council. We're a small group at the moment, um, and uh, I want to augment it. Um, I think I, I, I've got a particular interest in transport and the environment, and, and those would be the areas that I'm particularly interested in. But, um, as I say, um, I have stood here before, I came across uh, N nearly, nearly got second, <laughs> um, and uh, basically, initially I'm driven because I want to give Liberals uh, the chance to vote, you know, for, for a candidate, um, but also I'm keen that we uh, bring some sort of sensible policies into the council. Uh, I, I regarded the last, the last uh, administration uh, as not particularly useful. And um, I, I actually think the government we have nationally now is probably the best we've had since the Second World War. Thank you. Bob, rousing finale there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, thank you. Okay. 
Right, I'm going to stand up for a little bit as I didn't, uh, as I didn't in the big end. Um, okay, thanks for coming on. It's been quite, uh, quite a good evening, actually, hasn't it? It's just a good, uh, yeah, it's a good, uh, good discussion about local issues, what we all care about. At the end of the day, every one of us um, you know, up here, we, we do care about the, the area. Sometimes in, in politics, you go slightly different ways about it, but it's how you sort of make that difference um, personally, I think. I consider myself to be a local politician. Um, I, live in, I live in Milton Walls. I have to for a long time, born and bred in Southend, and as I said in my opening speech, you know, I'm sort of passionate about the area. There's, a, there's the issues which we, you know, all of us on this top table here have talked about that come from the doorstep, you know, the, the rubbish, the, um, the fly tipping. Work that I sort of didn't say when the sort of uh, question uh, came forward about how we sort of keep the streets um, clean. It is obviously the work um, with the officers in the wards. We have a, a very good sort of local officer which looks after a lot of Milton. But under the, you know, the current cuts, the current administration, these um, officers were reduced by five. So they're having to take over sort of a lot, um, a much bigger area. And while, you know, they say he's doing, uh, doing a good job, but looking after a bigger, bigger area, I really wouldn't have wanted to see the cuts to such um, good officers that look after fly tipping issues, street lights being out, um, repairs in the road. You know, that really is a vital um, help um, to, to us in the ward. So it's moving um, forward in, with those issues. The parking issue has, you know, we have got there. We have seen the scheme introduced in Milton. We need to look to the other areas where people still have that concern. Do we have um, schemes introduced if the um, support is there? Um, I want to do more um, work with the police with regard to speeding in the roads. We've, um, you know, a number of people are coming to me and it's on the main roads and get quite frightened by the uh, fast traffic, so tackle that issue. I'm hoping to get the community uh, speed watch sort of set up to do that. So, you know, I just um, want to be able to continue the work in Milton Ward and uh, represent you, the residents. Thank you. And Tammy? Thank you for coming this evening and thank you for listening to me. I am very new to this, so I've got a lot to take home with me and hopefully try and gain further insight into what the residents of Milton want and I hope that I will come and see some of you or even speak to some of you. From what I've heard, there's a lot of concerns within Milton. I hope that with your support we can pull Milton up and get it to a high standard and somewhere lovely to live because you'll obviously all enjoy living around this way and I'd hope <coughs> to be a part of that and enjoy it with you and I intend to join as many committees and actually get out there and do things myself as well as for you the residents. So thank you. Well we thank uh, Milton Community Partnership for putting on this evening. Uh, so that's been, that's been a, a splendid evening I think. Uh, all, none of us here are apathetic about politics and about, loc not, um, and about local issues on national issues. And it's great to, sh to show that. And I, and, I, and I think our candidates here deserve another big round of applause for this evening.